Let's go ahead and bring in Hall of Famer, one of my favorite guys to watch. As a Packers fan in the state of Alabama, I felt like I was on an island, but this guy helped uh, help Tom Tom Hanks cast away me back home. That's cool. Brett Favre, former Packers, Vikings, and Southern Miss Eagle. I got to show Southern Miss Absolutely. some love. Brett, I appreciate you hopping on, man. Not a problem. Definitely. Well, doing? doing good, man. Well. I got to tell you before we start, we played down in the Senior Bowl uh, Charity Classic with you as well. Saw the swing. Well. A lot of good things in the golf swing, man. How's the, How's your game right now? Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to the team. Uh, that's good to hear. That makes me feel better. But, you know, Brett, uh, I appreciate you getting on this early. I, I want to start. You're a guy that obviously played with a lot of passion. Uh, it was obviously very important to you. The quarterback position we know is the most important position on the field. What is the one ingredient in the recipe that separates good from great at that position? If you had to pick one, I know there's multiple, but what, which one stands out to you the most? Yeah, well, I mean, that's such a tough question to answer because uh, I, I think when it all – I'll give you a, a, a good example uh, from a guy who I have a tremendous amount of respect for, and that's Ron Wolf, uh, who stuck his neck out there for me, made the trade uh, with Atlanta to bring me into Green Bay. And he's, he, he and I were talking uh, – several years ago, just about, uh, the, you know, the new crop of quarterbacks. Or you know, I asked him if he kept up with – we're both retired. He lives down in Florida, and hmm. we talk pretty occasionally. And uh, not really the football in general, but uh, like he'll say, hey, what do you think about such and such? Or what do you think about this? Or do you hear about uh, – this player or whatever, you know, what's your take on this quarterback? Well, we were talking about the combine and, and I said, yeah, you know, they, it's funny how numbers come into play these days, especially combine. Well, his, his shuttle score was this, his broad jump was this. His, you know, he benched 225, 25 times. Mm -hmm. Ron Wolf kind of laughed and he said, you know, I, all I wanted to know, when it was all said and done, is can he win? Is he is he believable in the huddle? Uh, do you do you feel as a fan or as a teammate or as an administrator or as a coach when that guy is on the field, you know you got a good chance to win? And to me, that's the and, and a lot of things have to go into that being the case. Uh, I mean, you got to be able to throw. You got to be able to be accurate. You got to be tough. You, you got to be uh, savvy mentally. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of things that go into good gumbo, uh, as an example. But uh, but the bottom line is, can the guy win games for you? So that's the most important one. For sure. Well, you know, my dad coached linebackers forever and used to say, you know, they said, oh, this guy runs four or five. He's like, well, playing middle linebacker, if you've got to run 40 yards to catch somebody, I don't want your ass. That's not what the position <laughs> entails. But, uh, yeah. you, you know, Brett, too, you know, you look at, at the way offenses ha keep on evolving and everything's cyclical. 30 years from now, everybody will be running the triple option again. But when you look at these up-tempo, fast-paced offense, it's really just a, a two-minute drill with a little more on the menu is that something that that would have intrigued you more as a player? Or were you kind of more comfortable with, with the balance, tempo, being able to change it? I mean, you look at Tennessee and Josh Heupel. I mean, they go faster than a NASCAR race. Uh, kind of across the country, it's been something that everybody has added. Just your thoughts on the pace of play on offenses now, even in the NFL. Yeah, I, I think offenses in general, uh, college and, and uh, NFL, are f way more advanced or ahead of the game. Uh, as opposed to the defense. Now, at some point, that'll change, yeah. and that that may that may happen or may only happen once they change the rules and uh, to to where it favors defense. But it's all about scoring. Yeah. You know, I mean, as as a fan, do you want to see three nothing, seven six? Um, no. So it, it's all about shootouts, and so anything rule related. Uh, that certainly the NFL can do. I mean, 
And, and they've done that. It's favorable to the offense. I mean, you even look at a quarterback funny, you get a flag. <laughs> yeah, even, so true. You even think about putting your hands on a receiver, pass interference. Um, so um, I, I, I would have enjoyed playing in the – up. how could you not want to play it? Yeah. I mean, uh, that doesn't mean I would would have been successful in it, but I, but as a player, especially a quarterback, how could you not want to play in a, a pass-happy, up-tempo, run a ton of plays in a game type of atmosphere? Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, as the only defensive guy on set with a quarterback <laughs> and a wide receiver, it warms my heart in ways, Brett, I can never explain to you that Brett Favre just said that the defense is at a disadvantage. Uh, I don't want to hear a word uh, from either one of you about the rules or anything like that uh, where it's even. But anyway, go ahead. holding. David. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Brett, the first Super Bowl I remember watching was when you and the Packers beat the Patriots. We all know about the consecutive start streaks. But honestly, when I hear the name Brett Favre, I think of December 22nd, 2003, Monday Night Football. Your father had passed the day before. You know, I wouldn't have been the quarterback I was or the man I am without my father's influence. These guys' dad was an All-American. Taught y'all defensive schemes at what, age four, something yeah. like that. You went for three, 399 and four touchdowns that night. Was that the greatest football you ever played in your life? Oh, there's no question about it. You know, at halftime, I'd had, and, and it, the game is not about statistics when it's all said and done. Mm -hmm. I mean, to a certain degree, you're kind of judged on your statistics, but um, but it, but it, in regards to statistics, that game at halftime, I had better statistics than at any point in my career after four quarters. Wow. So just from that standpoint, yeah. Uh, and then when you throw in the circumstances, um, you know, it, it was it was very difficult circumstances as you would expect, but. There was a there was a sort of piece, um, and and I I'll explain that uh, the piece part came from I got two brothers and a sister, and when I was actually playing in the game, they were having to be home dealing with the issues, you know, uh, making arrangements and and so on and so forth. I had a team that was that was relying on me, that was rallying around me. In fact, I had a, if you want to call it an even bigger team, the, the, the attendance, primarily open fans, gave me a standing ovation. I mean, it, it was just a, 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 I mean, not that I, I obviously would have wanted circumstances to be much different, but mm -hmm. based on what had happened and, and what I was trying to accomplish, not, I couldn't have asked for a better response from my teammates from the opposing fans. Uh, so it, it was very difficult, but in a weird sort of way, it was comforting based on what I had to deal with. You know, and then reality hit when I was flying home and, and having to deal with that. But, uh, but yes, by far, considering the circumstances and statistically speaking, best game ever. Yeah, it was one of the most incredible performances I've ever yeah. seen. I want to go to your Southern Miss days. My mom's a Southern Miss alum. Uh, college football looks a lot different now with name, image, and likeness deals. You got the transfer portal, um, conference realignment. I mean, if you were in charge of college football, what, what's, what are some changes that you would make or that you would like to see done in the game? Well, I think parity is, is a forgotten thing. Uh, and the NFL, it's, at one point, Parity was was uh, was non-existent, and in Major League Baseball, it was non-existent. It, it's at one point, and, you know. And but now the NFL, you can be Detroit or Jacksonville, small market, Green Bay for that matter. In fact, Green Bay, the population in the city limits is roughly seventy-five to one hundred twenty-five thousand, but yet they showed a bigger profit than any team, I think, in the National Football League this past year. But I think at some point, you know, if, if you're an Alabama fan, you got to be loving the state of college athletics. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's probably 10 teams that could, could honestly say, I'm pleased with the way the, the NCAA athletic structure is, is mm -hmm. you know, the present structure. But – but at some point, you're just going to have a, a five to ten team 
league and everyone else. And you really have that now, to be honest with you. I think what would make, and it would take a little bit of time, but I think what would make this, the college athletics structure much better is divide the TV money up evenly. Mm. Now, you know, we shouldn't, we shouldn't get Alabama's gate money. I mean, they sell out every day. But I, but I, I do think to even the playing field somewhat, you got to give money to some of the schools, Southern Miss, athletic budget. I, I mean, I think two years ago, the TV contract that we received for Conference USA TV money two years ago was roughly 250000 Now, that's a joke compared to yeah. any SEC team. 65, 75 million, anywhere between 50 to 100 million per team. How, how are we supposed to compete with that? Well, if you're an Alabama fan, you go, that ain't our problem. <laughs> and it's not. But yeah. if you're asking how the, the, the parity or how the structure can be better, you got to help out the teams that are hanging on by a thread. Yep, yeah. Red Eye, just a couple more for you. Like I said, I appreciate you joining us this morning. Uh, Blaine, going to get to you here in the Booster Club. Real quick, question just hit me. Back, you're making your college choice. You got a guy like Lane Kiffin at Ole Miss that has one style, the way he handles quarterbacks, and guys like Nick Saban who are kind of a little bit different. If you were coming out of high school right now, you know, it may be an impossible question to answer. Would you rather play for a Lane Kiffin-style system or a Nick Saban-style system? Well, I'll tell you, when I came out, it was four score and seven years ago. Uh, <laughs> my choice was the easiest choice you could ever have in regards to picking a school. I picked the one school that picked that, uh, that offered me a scholarship. And, mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I say that because I'm extremely thankful. And if I had to do over again, knowing now what, what you know, the, the end result, I would have done the same thing. Yeah. And I think, I guess my point is, I don't know the right answer to that, but I know I, the best way I can explain it is had I, my mom and dad went to Southern Miss. My dad played baseball at Southern Miss. Uh, I, I was – I just – the previous several years prior to to uh, graduating high school, my dad would take me up to go watch Reggie Collier play, and I fell in love with Reggie. I mean, what a tremendous college football player he was. And, you know, I, I would have loved to play there. But had I been offered by other schools, Alabama, Mississippi State, Ole Miss, LSU, Auburn, Tennessee. Just say I'm offered by all those schools, including Southern Miss. I think, and I, you know, I, I don't know for certain, but I, I would bet that I would have chose another school for the wrong reasons. Yeah. That how, 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 you know, how many times they're on TV, how cool their uniforms are. Uh, they, they sell out every game. Wow, Alabama's offered me a scholarship. And then we may not be having this conversation right now. That's a good point. So I think in choosing a school, and I, and I when I coached high school several years ago uh, here at Oak Grove High School, and we had a lot of kids that were getting offers in a lot of places. And my daughter is another example. Our youngest daughter was getting recruited for indoor volleyball uh, and was offered by a lot of schools. And I, I've told them all. You got a problem that I never had, and that is choices. <laughs> choose wisely. Don't choose because the the color of their uniforms, or they're on TV a bunch, or you may have a chance to win a national championship. Granted, that's a good good reason to choose. You choose where you think you can play the quickest and play the most. Mm. If if it's about play, for sure. You know, if it's about what type the coolest helmet, then that's a different thing. Yeah. You know, who wears the coolest shoes, the most expensive shoes? That's, that's, if that's your preference, so be it. But I think you choose where you think you can play and play the most and play the quickest. Um, yeah. That's That would be my opinion. I, I, I love that answer. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go straight to the Booster Club here. Let's start with Mike. Yeah, question for you, Mr. Farb. Was there a quarterback that you watched that really helped craft your style of play growing up? I've said this all along, and and, uh, and I mean it 100%. There was two guys in professional football that I really, when I went out in the yard and played after watching a Sunday football game, I was 
emulating Roger Stallback and Archie Manning, running around, making stuff happen, using your feet, um, using your legs, extending plays, making a crazy throw. So, yeah, th- those were the two guys that I, I modeled my game at. Love it, Art. We got Travis Elrod here. Um, he says, outside of Lambeau Field, what was your favorite place to play in the NFL? You know, I, I've been asked that question a lot of times, and I don't know if I have one particular answer. I, I, I'll say it the, the best way I can explain it, and this is true. I love playing everywhere. <laughs> you know, playing at the vet in Philadelphia was not the greatest turf, but in, and the fans were just ridiculously <laughs> terrible. But that added, to the, that added to the mystique, you know, so I kind of soaked it all in. Definitely. Well, Brett, we really appreciate your time, man. Thanks for everything you gave, gave to the game uh, that we love, and, and I know it gave you a lot back as well. We really appreciate your time. And as a guy that hunts as much as you do, I'm sure getting up this early ain't a problem. <laughs> hey, I'm, we're getting close to make, waking up with a little crisp morning. Mm-hmm. You don't have to worry about sweating your butt off. I mean, this has been awful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. for sure. <laughs> One thing about the, the summer and the humidity, it makes you look forward to hunt season. Yeah, That's exactly no right. Hunting season and football season. Football like I said, falls, give the baby. kids Christmas. Yeah. You can right have there. Easter. Give me this. This yeah. is what I want. Yeah. Brett, exactly. really appreciate it, brother. Thank you, man. Yeah. Good talking with you guys. You too. Yes, sir. All right. Hey, if you like what you heard, go ahead and ring that bell. Turn those notifications on. We're bringing it every day daily from 2 to 3 Central, and we want you here. I can hear it ringing now.